There I was, lost in the wilderness of my teenage years, in the darkest forest without a map, no horizon. But I knew, I knew I had to find my way out, that I had to somehow transcend suburbia. But where to go? I went to MTV. And there on MTV, I saw Billy Idol. And I thought, I had seen punk rock, I'd heard of punk rock, I'd seen characters in movies that were supposed to be punk rockers, and I thought, this Billy Idol guy kind of looks like one of them. So, over the summer of 1984, I was 14 years old, I had the unique opportunity that we all have over the summer to reinvent myself. Go back to school as a new person. I decided to go back to school as a punk rocker. The problem was, I didn't know anything about punk rock. But I did find this product at the, uh, at the convenience or grocery store called Dippity Doo. And this green substance called Dippity Doo, if you took it and put it in your hair, you can make your hair stand up. We all know spiked hair, right? It's not a big deal. Spiked hair in 1984 in Edison, New Jersey was like painting a bullseye on my back. But I did it. Went to my freshman year of high school with my hair spiked. And I was walking down the hallway the first day of school. And there I see real punk rockers. They've got mohawks. They've got things dangling off of them. Bandanas and chains and boots and army fatigues and T-shirts with band names on them. And they see me coming. And they said, hey, man. Are you punk rock? And they formed a semicircle around me. And I said, yeah, man, I'm punk rock. They said, oh, yeah? Well, what bands do you know? And I didn't want to say Billy Idol. So I looked at their T-shirts. And I said, oh, yeah, I like, uh, I like the Dead Kennedys. They said, oh, yeah? What other bands do you like? So I looked at their T-shirts, and I said, oh, yeah, I like uh, Black Flag. They said, oh, yeah? What other bands do you like? Looked at their T-shirts. Oh, that one with the big skull, that band. You like the Misfits? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. What other bands do you like? Now, the, the last guy, he had a Three Stooges T-shirt on. Now, I knew it was a TV program, but I thought, could it be a band, too? So I was a about to say it, and he looked at me like, don't say it, don't say it. And this guy goes, hey, man, you don't know anything. And I said, yeah, I don't know anything. He goes, that's cool, come with us. That's cool, come with us. So I went. And I went to his house that day after school, and I went down in his basement, and he has this, like, uh, the basement is his bedroom, and no no uh, set director of any movie has ever done it as well as this kid's bedroom was. It was unbelievable with the punk rock posters and the instruments and the skateboards, everything everywhere. And I was just like, wow, what the hell? And he goes, hey, man, first things first. You got to lose those silly spikes. It's okay. So he sat me down and he shaved my head. And he said, uh, okay. Uh, we're going to make you a mixtape. Him and his buddy, they, started, they put some vinyl on. They started recording songs. He goes, this is important stuff. You got to go home and, you know, really, like, digest all of this. So, okay. So they make me a mixtape. He says, last thing, you should get a skateboard. I said, yeah, I really want a skateboard. He goes, yeah, you need to get a skateboard. I said, okay. So I said, well, I don't really know that much about skateboarding. He goes, well, you should talk to my brother. My brother knows everything about skateboarding, and he's got all the skateboard magazines. And I said, skateboard magazine? What? They make skateboard magazines? He said, yeah, it's called Thrasher. I was like, Thrasher. Thrasher's like, I never heard the word before, but it totally made sense. Thrasher. I was like, wow, that's cool. So I get home, <laughs> I get home from the first day of high school. And I walk into my house, I'd left the house with these silly spikes, and I come home with a shaved head, 
and talking about skateboarding and and I put this music on and show my parents listen to this music the first song on this mixtape was a song by Black Flag called Rise Above Rise Above I play it they their ears can't process what's happening but I really never really needed to listen to any more songs on that tape because the first song was the song. It became a mantra in my life, rise above. It's like, that's really powerful. So I know I got to go see this guy's brother. The problem with the brother is I know him from around the neighborhood. He doesn't like me. But he's got Thrasher magazine. So I go to his house after school the next day. And I knock on the door, and he comes to the door, and he answers. He goes, my brother's not here. I said, I know. I'm here to see Thrasher Magazine. He goes, what? I go, I want to see Thrasher Magazine. He goes, ah. all right, I said, hold on a second. And he walks away, and I'm standing outside the screen door. And he comes back, and he's got a magazine in his hands. And he holds it up, and he starts turning the pages from inside the screen. He won't let me touch it. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. And uh, I thought skateboarding was guys in really short shorts without shirts on, like spinning and doing handstands. That's all I had ever known. That's all I'd ever seen. And, uh, and I'm looking at these pictures of these guys on ramps and in the air. I had no idea this even existed. But then he gets into the middle of the magazine. There's an article in the middle of the magazine about this new phenomenon called street skating. And he's turning the pages. And I'm just like, wait. And he's like, no, nope. he just keeps turning the pages. And I'm trying to like, process what I'm seeing. And then I see a picture of a guy who's flying in the air. It appears over a police car. And I was like, wait. How? He goes, he's jumping off the car. I said, I could do that. He goes, you can't do that, man. That guy's a professional. I said, I could do that. He goes, oh, yeah? And he walks away. And he comes back with a skateboard, like a real skateboard. I'd only ever seen, like, a plastic toy store skateboard. I'd never seen a real skateboard. This was a Sims Christian Hasoy Rising Sun skateboard. And I just just couldn't even believe it. And he handed it to me. He goes, do it then. And I turned around, and his grandfather's car is sitting on the top of the driveway. It's okay. So I've never actually even stood on a skateboard before. And I climb up on top of this kid's grandfather's car, and I'm holding the skateboard, and I tell him to get the magazine, and I reference the picture. And I jump off the car, and I land in basically what was a gravel pit. <laughs> you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't really paved asphalt. It was just loose rocks. <laughs> and... Uh, I land, and I stick, and I fall forward. And my, my elbow starts bleeding. And, um, I go, okay. I fell forward. This time, I'll lean back when I land. So the next time, I land, and I try to lean back, but I totally Wilson it, and the board shoots out, and I land on my back. It's okay. Somewhere in the middle. So I start aiming for somewhere in the middle. And I... And I keep falling over and over, forward, backward, to the side, yeah. five times, ten times. Kids starting to get concerned. Hey, man, you should just stop. You should just stop. I said, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to do this. And eventually, I landed one, and I started riding down his driveway. And this guy, he was like the, he was, he was the keeper of cool, like, He knew, he knew about skateboarding. He had skateboard magazines. How? Who taught him? Who told him? Where did he find them? He was always the cool kid in our town. But I saw him lose his shit right in that moment when I landed that first jump off a car. He started jumping up and down. He couldn't believe it. He's like, you're a skateboarder. You're a skateboarder. Such a silly thing to say, but, but that's, that's what it felt. We felt that. It's like, we're skateboarders. Oh, my God. He goes, he goes okay, uh, you got to come with me. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you to the other skaters. I said, other skaters? There's other skateboarders? He's like, yeah, yeah. They all skate down at St. Matthew's. So let's go. So we take off through town. And we take turns riding the skateboard. And uh, every time he gives it to me, I just run and find something to jump off of. 
And I'm not, I don't land it every time, but I just, I'm jumping off of everything. Like uh, up and down the sidewalk, off a planter, off a bench. Anything we see, I just jump off of it. And as we get, as we go through town from point A to point B, from his house to St. Matthew's, I'm getting better at jumping off of things and landing on skateboards. And when we get to St. Matthew's, there's so many kids skating, I can't believe it. Like, where did they come from? And they see me coming with him. They know him. They know me, but they don't like me. <laughs> They're like, they look at him like, what are you doing? Why is he here? And he goes, no, 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 no. You should see what he can do. But we're in an empty, vacant parking lot. There's not a car around. So there's nothing to jump off of. So I just run and just jump in the air and land on the skateboard. And they seem kind of impressed at first. But then they go, hey, Mikey. And this little kid named Mikey comes over, like, show him. He runs and looks at me in the eyes as he does it and jumps on the skateboard. And he's like, it's not that big a deal, dude. So somewhere between the day before that I wasn't riding a skateboard and that day, Mikey had learned to jump on a skateboard. This other kid that I jumped off his grandparents' car, he didn't know about that. When he saw Mikey do it, I wasn't that cool anymore. <laughs> he just goes, like, give me my skateboard back. And then they all started skateboarding, and I just stood there. And I stood there, and I stood there, and I stood there, and they totally ignored me. And uh, eventually, I, one kid sat down and said, can I try your skateboard? He looked at me like, oh. he goes, yeah, but just don't scratch it. <laughs> he kicked it over to me, and I grabbed it, and I just went wild on the pavement like a puppy let loose from a cage. And this scared all of them, because I figured I'm probably gonna get a minute here to try to ride the skateboard. So I tried to maximize that minute. And uh, I, it was totally, totally wild, totally like uh, uninhibited, completely, completely free. And they were just working on maneuvers and I was just flying around. And so he give it back, <laughs> give it back. They didn't want me to ride their skateboards. So I went home, I told my parents I need to get a skateboard. They said, there's no way in hell they will ever buy me a skateboard. It's a waste of time, it's a pointless activity, and it's dangerous, and they can't afford the hospital bills. So I told them I will never go to school again, and I will never participate in anything that this family ever does unless I get a skateboard. And I had made these kind of threats before, but this time they knew, they saw it in my eyes, I meant it, that I had, in that moment of jumping off of this kid's grandfather's car, I had chosen my destiny. And my parents realized, hmm, we have to, we have to facilitate this or it's gonna be a big problem. He's gonna do it anyway. So they made a deal about grades and this kind of stuff, and then I could get a skateboard. It's okay. But the truth is, I, I never participated in school ever again. My entire obsession of my life became skateboarding. So I had these friends that weren't my friends, but they had skateboards, so I hung around them. They didn't appreciate me being around. They would skate all over town, and I would run behind them because I didn't have my own skateboard. So they'd be skating, and I'd be jogging, and I'd wait, and I'd watch. But they'd, they'd stop and skate a place, and I'd wait, and I'd wait, and I'd wait. And then one kid would stop, and go, can I try your skateboard? He'd be like, oh, just don't scratch it. And I'd get on the skateboard and go crazy, and I would scratch it, and he'd want it back. Give it back. Give it back. Um, and I did this every single day after school, every weekend. Um, and this was, like I said, this all started in the fall of 1984, first day of school, I discovered skateboarding. And it wasn't until Christmas morning that I would get my own skateboard. So between September, first week of September and Christmas morning, I was running behind these other kids skateboarding. And uh, somehow they had money. I don't know where they got the money from. But they were always thinking about things like lunch, <laughs> food, and drinks. And uh, so I, didn't, I never even thought about any of that stuff. I just wanted to skateboard. They'd be like, let's get some food. I'd be like, what? 
And then they'd go get some food, and then uh, I'd sit there watching them. We had this, t- this sub shop in our town, this great sub shop, and they'd go there all the time. And, uh, and they'd sit down. I had no money, so I'm just sitting there watching the meat. But they, the, the sub sandwiches, the meat and the cheese would hang over the edge of the bread. And I'd be like, hey, man, can I just rip that piece around the, around the bread? Can I just have that? They'd be like, ah, I'd rip it off and hand it to me. <laughs> that would be my food. Um, and then one day, we were in the parking lot, and they were skating, and uh, I, I went over, and I asked if I could try one of their boards, and uh, they said, no, man, just come on, just leave us alone, you know, you're always, like, always begging for stuff, for food, and to ride our skateboards, I said, ah, man, so I just stand around, but eventually, they all sat down, they all had stopped skating, they were sitting in a circle talking about skateboarding. I never wanted to talk about skateboarding. I just wanted to skate. So while they're talking about skating, I said, "Hey man, can I, you know, can I, can I try one of your boards?" And someone pushed one out. Just leave us alone. That's okay. So I decided to leave them alone. I skated way off into the distance by myself. And this was the longest period of time I ever had with a skateboard. And I figured in this moment in time, I'm going to learn this trick. It's called the ollie, and the ollie is is like the main trick in street skating. It's the, it's the thing that opens the door for everything else. And in 1984, it was, the ollie was pretty primitive, but it was happening. And we all knew we had to learn it. None of us had really learned it yet. But I figured, this is my chance to learn to ollie. And I went over and far off in the distance by myself, and I started working on the maneuver, and I kind of got one. And I got super excited. So I started skating as fast as I could back to the group who was sitting in a circle in the parking lot, and I'm skating super fast. I'm like, guys, guys, look, watch, watch. The ollie I had done, sort of done by myself, was stationary. I wasn't rolling. But now I'm rolling at full speed, and I attempt an ollie. And they all sort of, like, turn to look. And I go in the air, and I loop out, and the board shoots out from underneath me. And it rides right up one of my buddy's backs and shoots off into the air like his back was a launch ramp. The board goes airborne. And he turns around, he goes, Father Lee, go home. Nobody likes you. <laughs> so I decided that at that moment that I'd had enough abuse. I wasn't going to take it anymore. And uh, I had taken so much abuse from these guys because I wanted to skateboard, and they had skateboards, and I didn't. But this uh, last uh, insult was too much to take, and I decided that skateboarding be damned. Enough's enough. So the next day after school, this kid was in junior high. He was in eighth grade. I was in high school, ninth grade. I left school early, and I walked down to the junior high. And, uh, and I waited outside the junior high. And he comes walking out, and he realizes, uh-oh, I have to answer for what I said. The bell was ringing. <laughs> we were going to fight. And he realized it. He knew clearly that this means we're in a fist fight. And uh, as he walked up, he said, hey, you want to go to my house and read skateboard magazines, watch, watch skateboard videos, and drink iced tea? I was like, good play, good call. Let's do that. After that, I was in. No one wanted to have to fight. So no, let's just tolerate this guy. Christmas morning. My, I got the skateboard, actually. The skateboard was ordered and delivered in November, and my mom put it in her closet. And I couldn't have it until Christmas morning. (laughs) Santa had to deliver it. So there I was waiting until Christmas morning. Christmas morning, I got my skateboard. And when I got my own skateboard, that was it. I skated. In the morning when I woke up, I skated. I skated to school. I skated at school. During passing, I would take my skateboard out of my locker, put it under my feet, and then put it back in the locker. I'd skate during lunch. I'd skate after school. I'd skate until the evening, until dinner. And then I would skate after dinner until I had to go in, and then it was bedtime. After bedtime, I would sneak out of my house, and I would skateboard. And when I would come home, I would lay in bed with my skateboard. And these were uncounted hours. We hear about 10,000 hours. Everything's counted now. Everything's charted and thought about in that way. This was play. 
This was completely play. Never even thought about it being at practice. I never practiced skateboarding. I skateboarded. And I did that for, I got my skateboard Christmas morning, 84. June of 1986, I found myself in Virginia Beach, Virginia at a professional skateboard contest. The contest was on a ramp. I was in the parking lot riding my skateboard. But this was a moment in time where skateboarding was changing. It was going in a different direction. The guys on the ramps, Tony Hawk, Steve Caballero, Jeff Phillips, Christian Hassoy, they were our heroes, but the focus was, sh was shifting to the streets. And there I was in the parking lot with a bunch of other kids skating. And the attention of the audience was going like this. There's the guys on the ramp and there's the kids in the parking lot. And they didn't know really which one to watch. And as the weekend went on, I kept skating in the parking lot. And uh, I was one of the better skaters by that time in the parking lot. And as the weekend came to an end, Sunday night, dusk, we're all skating in the parking lot. And then the greatest skateboarder of all time, even Tony Hawk will tell you this, Mark Gonzalez comes skating into the, into the parking lot. He's a street skater. He's the street skater. He's the poet of skateboarding. He comes skating in the parking lot, and everyone freezes. And basically, everyone decided that moment, we're all just going to watch Mark Gonzalez skate. But I was the last one to sort of bow out. I was still in the middle of a trick as he skated in, and he skated up to me, and he said, can I skate with you? I said, can you skate with me? He said, yeah, can I skate with you? He's like, what are those tricks you're doing? Where did you learn those tricks? I said, I made them up. He said, you made them up. That's so cool. Yeah, show me that one. So I started showing Mark Gonzalez some tricks. Now, an entire, entire skateboard audience and the entire skateboard industry and every professional in skateboarding is watching this exchange of tricks between me and Mark Gonzalez. And it goes on for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And eventually other people start skating too and participating and it becomes this really great jam session. And I figure this is like the highlight of my life. I got to skate with the best guy, my hero. And as it's coming to an end, Stacy Peralta, who's legendary skater from the 70s, the founder of the Bones Brigade, part of Pal Peralta Skateboards, he walks up to me and he asks me the same question that Mark Gonzalez asked me. He said, where did you learn these tricks, man? I said, well, I made them up. He said, you made them up? He said, hey, man, how would you like, uh, how would you like to be on our team? I said, the Bones Brigade? He said, yeah, man. We need you on our team. I said, well, yeah, I dreamed of this my whole life. My whole life basically that started at, you know, the first day of high school. That's when my life began. That's when I took my first real breaths. That's when I stepped out of the confines of suburbia into a world of fire and carved my own path. And that's where my path led. I definitely know I chose my destiny. Somehow I got there to that parking lot and... The rest of my life has ensued from there. I've been out of time for a long time. I, I don't know where the story was supposed to go. Hopefully it ended in a nice, nice, nice enough place for y'all. Appreciate your time. Thank you.